In this section, we'd like to focus on a way you may button up your SFTP configuration to restrict access to your SSH servers solely to SFTP. There are some cases, for example, when vendors or suppliers of information who connect to your services that are perhaps connected to the internet need to use SFTP, but you don't necessarily want them obtaining a shell on your server because that could lead to possibly subsequent liabilities that are unforeseen. So what we'll do in this section is button up a few of our boxes, the Red Hat Enterprise box as well as the Solaris box and the SUSE Enterprise 11 box and we'll test from the, the various systems including the Mac OS 10 box, the laptop since it's still on the wire and we'll test connectivity, ensure that no pseudo terminal is allocated when we connect using SSH tools and then test that SFTP is the lone protocol running. So let's open a shell and open our notes and include this documentation as we attempt to wrap up at least our initial foray into our studies of SFTP. So towards the end we'll label this section restrict or button up access to solely SFTP and of course the features includes improved security posture so if you're considering for example pursuing some sort of compliancy measure like PCI or SAS 70 one of the points that you could make to your auditors is that you do permit SSH base access but for the sake of file transfers those access points or vectors are restricted to solely the movement of data and no shell access. Of course shell access means an environment which can in, which can execute scripts such as shell scripts and through the or via the execution of shell scripts we invite additional liabilities into our computing environment. So how does this all work? We'll begin with the system that we're connected to. We need to update for each system that we'd like to improve the security on the authorize underscore keys file which by now you should know exists in the user's home directory in the hidden SSH subdirectory. For each key that we permit connectivity from, so for each public key that's in the authorize underscore keys file, we need to prefix the key with the appropriate command. That command is no dash PTY or no pseudo terminal allocation. So prefix each key in SSH authorize underscore keys with no dash PTY. When the SSH client connects to an SSH server, a pseudo terminal is assigned, as we've shown you. So for any SSH session, let's SSH, for example, to our enterprise SUSE box. And once there, if we execute TTY, we see that the pseudo terminal is 3. So by default, SSH server allocates a pseudo terminal when an SSH session is initiated and also when other SSH enabled clients are executed. The pseudo terminal is assigned, however you may not necessarily use them. And this pseudo terminal auto allocation is the concern that we'd like to button up. So for each key that we'd like to enforce this behavior on, we should pre precede it or prefix it with no dash PTY. Now there are a number of options that you can precede a key with, including force commands like command equals let's say ls dd or some other command that makes sense for your environment but for solely restricting access to non pty all you need is no dash pty so let's begin by buttoning up some of our systems now if you recall from our visio let's take a look at our drawing here the various systems that are on the wire let's look at the sftp edition drawing these are the various systems that are at our disposal on the wire. We will update the Red Hat Enterprise, SUSE Enterprise 11, Solaris 10, and MacBook, four of the six, and then attempt to connect from the various systems, Windows included. 
So from the shell, let's SSH, in fact, let's update the local system first. We'll modify our own SSH authorize underscore keys for any keys that exist on the system. Now, as you can see, on this remote system, we're on the SUSE one box here, we need to log out and do it locally. The remote system, the file doesn't exist, but locally it does. So we'll modify authorize underscore keys. Let's maximize this window so we can see more characters per line. So here are three keys that are allowed access via RSA and DSA into our account, Linux CBT. One is for the user at the host, Linux CBT SUSE one The other is for the user Unix CBT at the Solaris box. And the other is for the Windows host. So let's button up each of these keys by prefixing them with no-pty. So simply adding no-pty will do the trick. Now again, as mentioned, there are other things you may add. If you Google authorize underscore keys options or commands, you'll see the myriad options that are supported in authorize underscore keys. But again, you can do things like force commands, which we cover in Linux CBT OpenSSH v2 edition, as well as other options. So we'll no-pty this key as well. Now be sure that you bring the key onto one line. They're processed as one line, although when you cat the contents of authorize underscore keys from the shell, the key or each user's key appears to run multiple lines. They really run one line if they're, in, if they're functional. So they need to be on one line. And we'll just make a note of that just to be sure that this is not a point that you overlook. So note, ensure that when editing authorize underscore keys file, that each key occupies a single line. It's very important, otherwise you will deny inadvertently access to that connecting user. So these three keys have been buttoned up if or for lack of a better term, this is what you consider securing. And it does improve your security posture because you're denying shell access to a given user. Now let's replicate this on the other systems that are in our network and test connectivity. So we'll SSH to the SUSE Enterprise box at 50. Navigate into its SSH subdirectory and modify authorize underscore keys and prefix no-pty, bringing everything on one line. In fact, we'll debug by purposely allowing one of the keys to span two lines momentarily, just to show you that it will not work. So those three keys are updated. In a separate window, let's connect to our Solaris box located at 150. It's still on the wire. We haven't neglected it. At least we don't believe we've neglected it, it's still there. And we're being denied, perhaps we're connecting with the wrong account. Let's try it again. And now we're in using SSH. So the account should be named Unix CBT since Solaris is not a Linux distro. Navigate into SSH. Let's see if nano is available. It isn't, so we'll vi authorize underscore keys. This file contains two keys. Notice that vi reflects the fact that the file contains two lines, 648 characters, but two lines. So indeed, each key is resident on one line, although it wraps because of our screen resolution in even with today's modern large screens, let's say 30 inches or even bigger, let's say you exported your Solaris or Mac OS X to a large 70 inch screen, this number of characters still would not fit on one line. So just ensure that you recognize that the keys are reflected on one line, but they wrap because of the physical limitations of the screen. So I to insert, then insert no-pty with a space, escape, and this should still preserve